Now we're getting very close to actually beginning to produce our video. But before we go another step, we need to start to break down the detail. The first part of that detail is your script. The script is basically writing out the story. Now, if your video has people talking, dialogue, then you should in the script have all the dialogue. Joe says, Mary says, Larry says, they have all the names there and what do they say exactly. But more than that, the script has details about the location, the time of day, the situation, maybe about the clothes they're wearing, maybe about the sets or important things that are there that need to be used by the actors. Now, if your video is not including actors and not really including that kind of dialogue, like in my students' cases, they're usually doing something like uh, maybe recording a lecture. Well, that doesn't really have a script, does it? But you could still sit down and say, well, it's going to be that Professor Smith is speaking today and we need to make sure that it's in the room, where is he standing, what's the angle we're going to shoot from. So you can begin to make some of those notes. In the case of my students' projects, they do things like public service announcements and making a pitch for a product. Those actually do have a little bit of acting, a little bit of dialogue, and they also have props or things that the people in the video are going to touch and use and that needs to be written down otherwise when the day comes to go shoot the video nobody knows I was supposed to have a bowl I was supposed to have a jar I was supposed to have a, a, a bowl of noodles I didn't know that I'm supposed to have chopsticks where did they go I don't know so the script is a way to make the plan more and more clear another good thing about the script is you can give it to the other people working on the project and they can also see what's needed and what's involved. And of course today you can just put it on the internet and you can share it. For example, Google Docs. Your group could actually have the script inside Google Docs and different people in your group could be working on different parts of it at different times or the same time. So that kind of cooperation really is helped with a script. Now, a script can be very, very formal. You can go onto the internet, just do a search for how to write a formal script. There's even software to help you format and write a script. For example, in a real production, one page usually equals one minute of a movie. So if it's 100 minutes, it's 100 pages. But that rule can be changed. And in your case, you don't need to worry about such details. You really just want to begin to write down what you're going to make. If there's dialogue and, you, and it's more than just a few words, which are easy to forget, you need to write them down and all the bits and pieces. And that helps you really get the whole thing together. Now, I'm not saying you need to make a really complicated script, but I've seen from my students, if they have no script, they run into the same problem we've talked about over and over again. You get demotivated, you get burned out. You begin working, you get confused, things aren't working, you wasted the day, and now you've got to come back another day. So I really emphasize getting the script together. Let's be honest though. I've taught this class before, I've had my students do projects, I've asked them upload their scripts beforehand, and boy, that just doesn't work too good. They're very hesitant to get the thing written down. I think the basic reason is time. They just keep putting things off and they think, well, we'll worry about it later, worry about it later. They have an idea in their head and they wait until the day comes they're going to go shoot their video. Then they just make it up as they go along. They had a rough idea. That kind of works. It's not impossible, but it takes more time. Things are disorganized. And as we'll see some examples later, the quality can suffer because they had a general idea, but nobody knew anything specific and they just made it up and it's kind of crappy, <laughs> kind of shoddy looking. So yeah, that's uh, a script. I hesitate to push on it too hard because it seems like my students are hard to execute on it. But it's important. All right, let's go off to the hardware table. A 
the hardware table again and what hardware we're going to look at today well we're still on the sound i love being on the sound because i just can't say it enough how important the sound is we've talked about all the different possible ways to get the sound into your camera we've also talked about maybe you don't have a camera but you have another capture device to capture your sound and that works too Today I'm going to talk about a mixer. Now I know you've seen mixers before. Those are the big boards with all the knobs and dials and everything. They can be very complicated. You can buy some of them pretty cheap. You can buy some of them very expensive. But today what I'm going to talk about is a very basic one which gives you the idea but is also really helpful when you're shooting your video. And that's a little portable mixer like this one. In fact, this can be battery powered. It has a battery, 9 volt battery can go right in there. Very helpful. You can use it out in the field. Now, let's look at this and from here we can kind of learn what a mixer does and why it's important. On the back of the mixer here you can see it has two inputs, XLR inputs, and it's going to be the left and the right so you get stereo. You don't have to have two, you could have just one if you want to. You also have two RCA jacks, also they could be sound coming in left and right. So you have either these left and right or this left and right. Now if we look at the front, what we have is an out, and focus, out, and if I take my quarter inch jack, I can plug it into the out. And now this jack here, where would this go? This would go into my camera's input. So here's my camera and it has a out and an in and I'm going to put it into the recording in. So now we've got the mixer going right into, into the camera. And then what about my microphone? Well now I can take my shotgun microphone for example here and remember it has an XLR mic attachment and I can put that into the XLR jack so now I've got a microphone coming into this portable mixer and the output is going into the camera so it's a bit um, bit of a chain of devices here I'm having a whole time hard time holding them all right but hey, here's something cool right here. This portable mixer has a connector here and it can actually connect right onto the base of the camera. So I can screw that on there and it would hold the camera and the mixer together. That's cool. And then if I had a long line, then I could use my microphone far away and close to my talent, to the actors. Okay, well, let's look at what a mixer does and why this mixer is especially good when we go out shooting video. So remember we had two inputs, so we can have two microphones, and or just one, or two, and then here what we do is we can adjust the volume of the sound coming in from those microphones to be louder or uh, lower or higher, louder or softer. Because the one thing we want to make sure we don't have is the sound being too loud too high because once it gets too high it becomes like you can't hear anything right that ruins it so you've got to keep it low but not too low so this way you can adjust it and because you can have just one mic you could be adjusting one if you had two it's good because now you can levelize them you can level them up equalize them make them about the same and then here what's this little jack here well that's to listen to on your headphones, right? So you remember you want to be listening on, to the sound you're getting. You could also be listening back at the camera. You'd be plugging into that. So that's the way actually all mixers work. You're basically just taking one input and adjusting it up and down, a second input adjusting it up and down. But if you go to a recording studio or a just have a fancy, expensive mixer, you have many inputs, not just two, not just one. Although in this case, we're just using the, the example of 
to two maximum. Okay, so that's the basic idea of a mixer. And this is the specific cool thing of a portable mixer. So you take this out in the field. And you could just take your SLR camera there, put that on top of there. You could put this on your tripod, and I could be looking at the camera and adjusting the audio and listening to the audio at the same time. Okay, let me try that. So I'm gonna try that. Give that a try. Okay, so I'm gonna take my camera. Okay, camera's on. Okay, I'll take my headphones. Take my headphones. I'm gonna plug those in. This is one one eighth mini jack. Plug that in. Okay. Those are my headphones. Put those on my head. Okay. Now then, microphone. I've got the microphone. And I can plug the microphone into the XLR jack. Okay, and I get the microphone in. And I can put my microphone on here. And now I've got a little setup. This can go on top of my tripod, and I can be shooting my video, getting the mic sound, sound to the mic, and adjusting listening very carefully and boom look at that a very professional little setup for not a lot of money what's the one last thing I could do maybe my camera does not accept audio in or maybe I'm using my phone and I can't use audio in so what can I do I can use my portable recorder and then this machine here has an out so I could take the out Plug it in here, and from that out, from this out here, I could plug this into my portable recorder and record the sound out from there. Pretty cool. So that's a nice portable sound setup you can have for not a lot of money. I mean, it's more than nothing but you're getting better and better sound, and that's what's gonna make your production really good. Even if you're just recording a lecture in a hall, in a room, this kind of setup can be very helpful to improve your audience. Good luck.